The story begins with our protagonist, Miri, hanging out with her best friend, Dasim. She's feeling a little bit down because her friend is about to leave for Spain to attend an exhibition. However, Dasim tells her not to stress too much and to step out of her comfort zone while she's away. We then see a flashback of their high school days when Miri was a new student and struggling to fit in. Making friends was tough for her until Dasim took the initiative and invited her to be friends. They've been very close ever since and even ended up attending the same university. Miri is now pursuing studies in animation and manga while Dasim is studying design. In the present, Dasim leaves for her trip and Miri starts working part-time at a cafe. She then attends her first day of college where a teacher assigns them to create a webtoon project with a group of three people. A senior student approaches Miri and asks her to join his team. He also invites another student named A. Kong, but the latter declines. The senior then says that they will fail the assignment if the group is not complete. Hearing this, Mary panics, so she pleads with A. Kong and finally convinces him to be part of the team. The three then sit down to brainstorm, and the senior suggests they create a romance story and draw characters based on their personalities. He soon begins intimidating them, so De Kun gets annoyed and stands up to leave. Miri also follows him, and they leave together. Outside, Miri thanks De Kun for joining the team and asks if they want to be friends. He agrees, and the two shake hands before parting ways. Our girl is delighted that she's already made a friend the first day of college. Later, while Miri is working at the cafe, she calls Dawson and excitedly shares about her new friend from college. The latter is happy for her and also shares about her own adventures from her recent trip to Florence. After ending the call, Miri begins sketching the face of her ideal guy for the webtoon project. Moments later, a guy suddenly walks into the cafe and he looks exactly like her sketch. He introduces himself as Yen Tae and claims that he's a regular. Miri is mesmerized to see him and spends the rest of the evening staring at him. After closing the cafe, she's about to leave when Yun Tae approaches her. He suggests they walk home together since they're headed in the same direction. This makes Mary very excited, and while talking, they discover they attend the same university. Over the next few days, he shows up every day at the cafe, and they continue walking home together. One day, Mary is sitting alone at the college canteen, daydreaming of Yun Tae, when Dae Kong suddenly joins her. They start eating together and discover that Dae Kong doesn't eat egg yolks, while Miri avoids egg whites. She reveals that she likes drumsticks, while Yun Tae prefers chicken breasts. The two end up exchanging their food portions and decide to eat together from now on. In the evening, Miri serves coffee to Yun Tae and starts chatting about her best friend's recent trip to Florence. Hearing this, he reveals that he was also there for a few days and had an amazing experience. Yun Tae now wishes to go back there with someone he loves. Miri's heart begins to flutter since she thinks he might be talking about her. The following day, Miri and Dae Kong meet with the senior guy to discuss their project. The latter is very annoying once again and criticizes them for their plot, claiming that the story is too bland. He then begins to behave inappropriately with Miri, and when Dae Kong tries to intervene, he deliberately pours a drink on him. When our hero leaves for the restroom, the senior pulls Mira closer and asks if she has a boyfriend or if she's ever been in a relationship. When she says no, he claims that that's the reason she can't come up with a good romance story. He continues to harass her, but just then, Dae Kong returns and pours a drink on his head. This results in a heated fight between the two men. After things calm down, Mira tends to Dae Kong's injuries and tells him that he shouldn't have fought with the senior like that. But our hero doesn't care because the guy was inappropriate towards her. The two then begin drinking beer, during which she tells him about her best friend, Dasim. She also tells him about Yan Tae and how the sketch she drew of him earlier looks just like him. She claims that he's her ideal man and asks Dae Kong for advice on how to confess her love. Hearing all this, he becomes a little upset because he's started to develop feelings for her. The next day, Mary decides to confess her feelings to Young Tae and gets ready. She even texts her best friend to tell her about her plans. Meanwhile, as Dae Kong is about to leave the college, he unexpectedly spots Mary's sketchbook and decides to return it to her. When Yun Tae arrives at the cafe, Mary prepares his favorite drink and gathers her courage to confess her feelings. But just as she's about to do so, Dawson suddenly arrives and Yun Tae rushes to hug her. The two shockingly reveal that they met in Florence, fell in love during that time, and are now in a relationship. Miri feels like her world is shattered and she's left speechless. Just then, Dae Kong shows up to return her sketchbook and Dawson asks who he is. Realizing that her friend has already read her tech, Miri admits that Dae Kong is the guy she likes. She's embarrassed and tries to leave, but Dae Kong holds her hand and admits that he likes her too. Both Dae and Yun Tae are overjoyed to see this and they congratulate the new couple. 
Afterward, when Mary and Dae Kong are alone, she apologizes to him and tries to explain the situation, but he stops her and says he's already figured it out. He then suggests that they start a fake relationship to avoid any suspicion from Dae Sum. Mary isn't entirely thrilled with this idea, but feeling she has no other options, she agrees. The following day, the two couples decide to go on a double date to watch a movie. During this time, Yun Tae and Da Sum grow closer, while Miri and Dae Kong maintain their distance. Turns out they've created a contract agreeing not to engage in physical affection, like hugs and kisses. As they leave the theater, Da Sum asks them why they're not holding hands. Dae Kong replies that they've just started their relationship yesterday, and they don't want to rush things. They then go out to eat, where Yun Tae begins feeding Da Sum with his hands. This makes our heroine very jealous, but she can't do anything about it. Later, the couples part ways and Mary confides with Dae Kong about how unlucky she feels, as this is the first time she falls in love and it's with her best friend's boyfriend. In response, he claims that for her to move on, she needs to find a way to hate Yun Tae. Mary thinks this is a good idea and thanks him. That evening, she looks online for ways to hate her crush, but doesn't find anything, so she decides to resign from her workplace as it's the only way she can avoid Yun Tae. The next day, Mary meets with the owner of the cafe and tells him that she doesn't want to work anymore. However, he tells her that his wife is in the hospital and he needs her to be there. He then asks Mary to take care of the cafe for a month while his wife recovers. She can't refuse after hearing his story, so she reluctantly agrees. Because of this, she ends up seeing Yonte every day, which hurts her a lot. Mary continues to try various ways to hate him, but she can't find a single flaw, which only makes her more frustrated. One evening, he mentioned that Dawson's birthday is approaching and asks Mary to find out what she wants as a gift. Mary is obviously upset by the request, but she puts on a brave smile and promises to find out. A few days later, Dae Kong is waiting in line to get limited edition comics, where he will have to stay all night. Miri joins him and keeps him company and vents about her crush. She explains how Yun Tae is a perfect package, so she can't find any flaws. Dae Kong is annoyed by the fact that she only talks about her crush, but he tries his best to tolerate it. Meanwhile, Mary looks around and notices that other people are wearing blankets. She then decides to buy a blanket for them as well. However, since there's only one left, they're forced to share it and spend the night together. The next day, while the girls are hanging out, Mary asks her best friend what she wants for her birthday. Dawson replies that she wants to go camping in the woods. She invites her and her boyfriend to join them as well. Miri hesitantly says that she might be busy, but when they call Dae Kong, he readily agrees, claiming he loves camping. The following morning at the college canteen, two girls approach Miri and ask if she's dating Dae Kong because they seem very close. When she says no, one of the girls asks her to set her up on a date with Dae Kong. Miri is reluctant, but eventually agrees and invites him for a coffee later. Dae Kong is thrilled that he's going to spend some time with her, but upon arriving, he sees another girl. This makes him very angry, but regardless, he sits down and Miri introduces the two of them. He then tells her to leave as her work shift is beginning soon. As Miri proceeds to leave, she sees Dae Kong and the girl chatting, which makes her jealous. The following day, the group goes camping for Dawson's birthday. They have a lot of fun hanging out and cooking. However, Dae Kong continues to avoid Miri, which makes her worried. She then approaches him and asks how his day went yesterday, but he doesn't reply. In the evening, the group sits down to play Truth or Dare. When it's Dae Kong's turn, Dawson asks him what he wants to tell Miri that he hasn't already. Our hero then looks into her eyes and tells her that he likes her sincerely. The other two are very happy to hear this, but Miri is shocked. Her friends encourage her to respond to his feelings, but she gets nervous and walks away. Dae Kong follows her, and she asks if he said those things to pretend in front of his friends. However, he replies that he genuinely likes her, and that what he said was true. He reveals that he liked her long before they even met in class. During the college entry exam, she left him a pencil with some encouraging words on it. He admits that he only got through the exam because of her. Dae Kong then confesses that he's been trying to hate her, but it's just not happening. He also admits that the date the other night with the other girl didn't go well because he was never interested in her. Miri is shocked to hear this, but she coldly says that she likes Yun Tae and not him. Hearing this, Dae Kong is heartbroken, so he suggests that they should end their fake relationship. When Miri returns to the camp, she finds Dawson in a very angry mood. Turns out she overheard the entire conversation and found out the truth. She accuses Miri of lying to her and claims that the friendship is over. Dawson then walks away, while Miri feels guilty and bursts into tears. In the following days, Dawson cuts off all contact with Miri, leaving her all alone. Dae Kong also doesn't come to college, and Yun Tae stops visiting the cafe. 
Because of this, Mary feels very bad and blames herself for hurting those close to her. A few days later, Yunte finally comes to the cafe and sits down for a conversation. He apologizes for not realizing her feelings and for leading her on all this time. Yunte explains that Dawson has broken up with them because she values her friendship with Miri more than their relationship. He then asks Miri to be a good friend and to do what's right. The following day, she notices Dawson in the college canteen and tries to talk to her. However, the latter refuses to acknowledge her and walks away. She is then unexpectedly confronted by the girl Dae Kong had rejected. This girl and her friend push Mary to the ground and start calling her bad names. Mary feels helpless and begins to cry, but Dawson suddenly arrives to defend her friend. She then ends up beating up the bullies and warns them to stay away from Mary from now on. Later, the two sit alone and clear up the misunderstanding. Dawson doesn't blame her best friend and claims that if she were in her place, she would have done the same thing. After clarifying everything, she tells Mary to express her feelings to Dae Kong, as he is the only one who truly loves her. In the evening, Mary sits down and sketches a portrait of Dae Kong. She then goes to his house and tries to call him, but he doesn't answer. Assuming that he doesn't want to talk to her, she leaves a voicemail expressing how much she likes him. At this moment, Dae Kong arrives behind her and startles her. She asks why he didn't come to college, to which he responds that he had the flu. Mary then apologizes for not realizing his love sooner and confesses her feelings. She says that she doesn't want to force him into anything and will wait for his answer. For the first few seconds, Dae Kong doesn't say anything, which makes Mary very nervous, but then he suddenly kisses her, and the drama concludes with this beautiful ending.